was against the wall And it looked as if it was over You, come on Man And we're standing here Only because you made a way I don't know how, but you did it Say that, y'all. Don't know how, but you did it. Anybody got a testimony? Don't know how. Don't know how, but you did it. Woo. Somebody ought to just think back and say, don't know how. Don't know how, but you did it. Raise it one more time. Said, I don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. You step right in just in the nick of time. Don't know how, but you did it. Don't know how, but you did it. Come on, raise it real loud. You got two more times. Perform miracles There is nothing hey! That's impossible And we're standing here Only because you So you move now You move now You cause the walls You cause the walls to fall With your power With your power Perform miracles Perform miracles There is nothing There is nothing That's impossible You said yes. Come on, say when the doctor said no. You said yes. I should have been dead, but you said not yet. Say I should have been dead, but you said not yet. Cause you're a miracle worker. Say you're a miracle worker. You're a miracle worker. Somebody raise it.
were standing. Say, and we're standing here only because you were last time. And we're standing here only because you made a you made a way. You made a way. You ought to think back and say, You made a way. When I thought it was over, say it again, say, You, you made a way. Again, say, You made a way. You made a way. As we transition to corporate prayer this morning, Yesterday I was just having my moment with the Lord and I was just singing this over and over, playing the piano. And God started to remind me of all of these moments in my life that he's made a way. Because sometimes it's really easy to forget when you're in the middle of something to remember all the times you were delivered. And what was different about this is he started to tell me all these things. You know, when people have done wrong to you, he's made a way. When you've come up with a sickness, he's given you healing. But then he started to show me these moments where I put myself in situations. So in the fall of 2017, I was in kind of a rough relationship that I know the Lord didn't want me in. And I was just kind of like, you know, I kind of know best in this area, sometimes we think. And I remember I ended up getting engaged and I was laying in the floor of my closet crying. And I said, God, I know you told me not to be in this and you have every right to not help me out of this situation because I went against what you said. But I know you're good and you're faithful and you're consistent and you're kind and even though I put myself in harm's way, I know you'll make a way out of this. And I kid you not, and days later, I get a call from Pastor Tasha and she's like, hey, can I give Pastor John Gray your phone number? And I was like, sure, of course. And I ended up talking to Pastor John and he's like, I want you to move to Greenville. And I had no idea that that was gonna be the thing that got me out of that relationship. And what I wanted to remind you today, what I felt like the Lord put on my heart to say is there are people in this room who have stopped going to God about specific situations because you have put yourself in it financially, relationally, spiritually. And you're like, well, you told me not to do this and I did anyway. So honestly, it's not your responsibility. But can I remind you today that the God that we serve is faithful to get you out of anything, any mess that you have even put yourself in this morning. So when you feel like your back's against the wall and even you are the one that put yourself there, he is faithful to rescue you from it. Come on, can we go to God together? Let us not just listen to what I'm saying, but lift up your voice in your heavenly language. God, we repent for not going to you first. We love you. We love your consistency, your faithfulness, your kindness, your mercy. You're romancing us back into your heart even today. We thank you that you are working all things. We thank you that you are working every situation, every single thing going on in our lives. You are putting in this mosaic, this tapestry, this beautiful story of you and I and our love. Lord Jesus, we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise and adoration. We lavish our love on you. Come on, let's just lift up a shout of praise today. Hallelujah. All glory and honor to your name. You are worthy. Amen. Amen. Come on, tap the person next to you and say, he's making a way. Even now, he's making a way. Well, church, we are so excited to have you with us this morning. Go ahead and meet someone next to you. Give them a high five. Give them a hug. Tell them they look good, even if you're prophesying that over them. Tell them to take you up to lunch. You know, you have not because you ask not. And once you've greeted a couple people behind you, you can go ahead and take your seats and turn your attention towards the screens. Chris has, has special tricks now. He's disappearing. Good morning, Relentless. Are y'all excited to be in the house of God? 
I said, are you excited to be in the house of God? Let me hear you in the back of the room. We are, um, this is one of our favorite parts of our service. And it's, um, that's very, something that's very special to me. I love to sow seed because I understand that the more that I sow, they used to tell us this, you can't beat God's giving no matter how hard you try. So I'm gonna keep on trying. The more that I try, the more he gives. He gives seed to the sower. Anyway, I was praying about this moment and um, the Lord began to speak to me and he took me to John 6. And this is a very familiar passage of scripture about the two fish and the five loaves, but he showed me something special for us today um, out of this scripture. Um, and um, it says in the, in the eighth verse, another of his disciples, Andrew Simon, Peter's brother spoke up. Here's a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. Look at your neighbor and say, sit down. Sit, tell it to him like you, like a parent, sit down. Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place and they sat down, about 5,000 men were there Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He showed me two things in this scripture. The first one is, sit down. Some of us have been trying to make our own way. Some of us have been trying to figure it out for ourselves. Where's the next meal going to come from? Or how are we going to pay this bill? Or how are we going to fulfill this obligation? And I hear the Lord saying to us, sit down. My father used to tell me something every time I spoke with him before we got off the phone. And he would tell me, Tasha, stay at the feet of Jesus. And that takes me to the story of Martha and Mary. We know this story very, very, very well. Martha was busy trying to work, but Mary took a seated position at the feet of Jesus. And she began to listen to what he was saying. I came to tell you today that there are some things that's about to break out in your life. And you don't have the strength to make it happen. But all you need to do is sit down at the feet of Jesus. Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, sit down, sit down. The next thing he did is he took me, he took me to the little boy. He said, there's something special about the little boy in this scripture that I never really thought about because a lot of times we think about the miraculous thing about, hey, two, two fish and five loaves fed 5,000 people. But here there's a little boy who showed up to this ceremony, this service, and he thought he had just enough for himself. There are some people in this room, you've been saying, I can't give that because I got just enough for myself. I got to hang on to that because that's just enough to cover my light bill. That's just enough to cover the car note. But can I tell you that you have more than enough to feed a multitude? You have more than enough that's going to take care of your family. You have more than enough to send your children to school. So let me tell you something. Don't be afraid to give God what you have because what you have is it's more than enough to cause a breakthrough in your house like you've never seen. Can I tell you that I believe that that little boy did not know that he was showing up with his two little fish and his five loaves of bread to feed a multitude of people. Can I declare to you today that there are some people in this room, you think I just got a little bit, but God is saying I can take a little bit and make a lot out of it. I need somebody with a seed in this room to lift up your voices and tell God, I'm going to give you what I got. I'm going to give you what I have because I know you can do greater with it than I can. Father, we give you our seed today and we're trusting that you're going to use it for your glory. God, we give you our seed today and we trust you that you're going to multiply it 100 fold by the power that's in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout, Amen! Amen! Glory to God! Get your seed in your hand and I need you to act like you're that little boy and say, God, this is what I have and when I put it in the ground today, I'm expecting it to bless the masses. Somebody shout hallelujah! Holy Spirit, you bless Everybody. 
Everybody say blessing. Blessing. Oh, blessing. Blessing. Do you got blessing? Blessing. For the rest of the rest of the Blessing, blessing, oh, every time I turn there around, will be blessing, oh, blessing. Somebody lift your voice in this room. Somebody just turn around real quick. Turn around. Do it again. Somebody just. Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. Somebody do it one more time. Now, if you believe every time you turn around, it's going to be blessings for the rest of this year. I need you to shout a praise in this room like God is able to do. There's something crazy in this room, Relentless. I want somebody to turn around one more time. Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. Is it all right if we release a crazy praise at 8? Keep turning until I see it. Somebody give God a shout of praise in this. Every hand lifted, release your worship. God, we love you today. We, we declare that you are welcome here. Have your way. Do what you want to do. Shake us how you want to shake us. God, break us how you want to break us. We're here for you. We're here for you. Can we do this? Somebody just release your worship. Tell him you love him. Tell him how amazing he is. God, you're faithful. Your glory, God, is what I 
Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence that's overtaking us in this room. We ask now that you take us deeper. Oh, somebody pray that prayer. Say, take us deeper. Take us deeper in your word. We're here for you today. And we'll give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Come on, worshipers, shout amen. Relentless, I'm so excited about the Word of God today. If you're excited about the Word of God today, put your hands together. He is not a stranger to us. And every time He comes to Relentless Church, we are blessed and we're the better for it. Can we open our mouths, give God praise for Pastor Petrie today? Come on, raise up your voices. 
and give God a shout of praise. If you believe the word of God is about to change your life forever, you can do it louder. 